The scales of the equinox hang in the air, keeping the balance of old, when daytime and nighttime are equal, and summer to winter is sold. Venus, the ruler of cardinal air, gives beauty and gentle demean, lover of justice, avenger of wrongs, the zodiac's law-giving queen. First in the six of the spiritual signs, holding the balance of twelve, betwixt light and dark, the body and soul, in regeneration to delve. The aura of Venus, a mystery here of love and its highest ideal, expressed by the scales and the blending of both, with marriage, its manifest seal. The right of Libra. We have passed through the initial six signs of the zodiac, and when the sun illuminates Libra at the autumn equinox, the following six journeys will begin. Each of these succeeding signs can best be described as the higher octaves of the previous ones. Blending the body of the initial six with the spirit of the following six, and the 12 signs, in order of sequence, express steps in the evolutionary process. Situated at the midpoint of the zodiac, Libra reveals that the body is indeed the house of the soul. A table to become an altar must be dedicated to your work and set apart from mundane objects. A smooth, polished surface looks pleasing to the eye, and upon it should reside at all times a vase of fresh flowers. When the sun has entered Libra, consecrate the altar by placing lighted incense under it. The fragrant smoke will permeate the wood and rise to enclose the surface, thereby wholly purifying it. Scented oil of a similar perfume can be lightly smeared around the edges or underneath its surface. While the rite is in progress, a candle should be burning upon the altar in the color attributed to the sign in which you are working. A symbol or picture of the sign should also be displayed to remind you of its content. But apart from the above items, i.e. flowers, candles and sign, the altar should remain as uncluttered as possible. When you purify and dedicate the altar, make a formal address of your intentions and what you will to accomplish or become speaking from the heart. When all is ready, light the candle and sit down in a comfortable chair. This rite begins with a period of contemplation along the following lines. Allow your gaze to dwell upon the altar and try to realize how long it has taken this piece of furniture to become what you see before you. From a tiny seed, it quickened in the earth, then pushed small shoots towards the light. It spent long years growing into a sapling until the roots searching underground for nourishment spread wider still, mirroring the branches reaching to the sun. The first leaves 
tender and bright green, bursting forth and rustling with movement. Birds, building nests and chirping contentedly in the tree's foliage. More years, gaining maturity, until you were born, and still more. A great giant at last, standing with others of its kin, and all performing a miracle, that of taking in carbon dioxide and giving out life-giving oxygen for the world and its inhabitants. At last the whining saw, severing the tree from the earth mother, its long life in the sun and air, at an end. But still, the molecules of the wood remain, and skillful hands achieve a transformation. The elemental life of the tree has departed, but a new beauty is achieved. And once again, the tree is of service to humanity. Think on all this. Now, prepare for the visualization. Look just above the candle flame for a while. Then close your eyes on the world of form. When your inner eyes open, the light is still there. It is the light of a full moon and the orb bathes everything in a silvery radiance. It is almost as bright as day. You are sitting on a stone at the entrance to a long avenue. The flagstones are warm beneath your bare feet and the air carries a faint hint of ambergris. The avenue is guarded by ram-headed sphinxes which confront each other between high stone pillars. On the ground, the shadows are inky, and the whole scene is one of silver and black. The silence is almost palpable. Overhead, myriads of stars blaze in the dark vault of heaven. Another vista of silver and black. You are dressed in a robe of fine white linen which is held in place by a girdle of twisted cords. You realize that the avenue awaits, so you begin to walk steadily along it, the moonlight splashing cold between the pillars. Eventually, you emerge into a vast courtyard, empty and somehow alien. Ahead, broad steps lead up to a great doorway, flanked by two gleaming statues made entirely of gold. They are of the goddess Mart and represent truth and justice. As you slowly and hesitantly climb the steps, the doors swing silently open, as if you are expected. It is then that you realize you are not alone. A jackal, black as jet, had silently at your side. You sense it will not harm you. It does not even appear to notice you. It utters a low growl as the doors open, the long pointed muzzle sniffing the interior. Then it darts forward and disappears inside. You follow, your heart pounding. Faint light breeze in the gloom as you enter. The light moves as if beckoning and your feet touch marble, smooth and cool, 
as you advance into the temple. Light from lamps hanging from a high ceiling reveal a huge pillared hall. Sweet odor of incense is strongest here. The walls are painted with pictures of the Egyptian gods and goddesses and moonbeams melt through the high windows. Now you perceive that a slim figure is carrying a hovering light. The captured flame gleams steadily through translucent alabaster. Your guide is naked. Reed slim oiled limbs reflect the flame. The bare buttocks undulating as the muscles move under the bronze skin. A long black wig caresses the slim back, tight curls bobbing from side to side. You follow meekly. At the far end of the hall, your guide passes through an arched doorway covered by a reed curtain. It opens onto a narrow passage which penetrates deeper into the temple. Here the walls are covered with hieroglyphics which leap into life as the light catches them. Another curtain is lifted, a small hand holding it while you pass through. Then you are alone. Without the friendly lamp, the blackness is oppressive and you know not what to do. But presently, a pool of light shows in the distance and a tall figure advances, silhouetted against the sudden brightness. You have entered a large circular room where a round table stands centrally. The figure is that of a young woman. She moves to the table and lights a lamp which is placed upon it. The face that turns to look at you reveals great calmness and serenity. She inclines her head and smiles and you walk across to her. The floor of this room is made from multicolored mosaic tiles inlaid with precious stones. The pattern is of a great zodiac which gives way to another pictures and symbols, making it a mandala of universal knowledge. Sit down and rest. The voice has the clarity of a golden bell. Your companion indicates a chair and seats herself facing you. The table is of obsidian shining and dark like a great lake and your images are clearly reflected in its surface. A beaker of wine is offered and you drink thankfully. All the while you are regarded steadily by a pair of wide grey eyes which seem to understand all your hopes and fears. You gaze back and contemplate the face before you. The eyes and brows are blackened with coal, and the lips are stained crimson. The headdress is composed of a single upright feather set at the side of the head and surmounting the customary Egyptian wig of gleaming black hair. The tiny ringlets fall to touch the well-formed breasts over which a jeweled pectoral rests. 
Broad bracelets decorate the tops of the slim brown arms, which are folded and resting on the table. My name is Mart, and I am the goddess of truth and justice. My symbol is the scales, and you have been brought to this temple to view your position in the scheme of things. Mart smiles. Be not dismayed. What is required of you is no more than can be comfortably endured. You will be given the unique opportunity of renewing the most important of your previous lives on earth, the ones which contain the best and the worst of actions and indicate the extent of soul development. The very fact that you are here at this moment in time reveals that your higher self is now taking charge. That is good. Over the centuries, the seed that is your soul has traversed many lives. I welcome you here as a star seed of the future. Star seeds are those souls who grow to become the shining ones, dwelling on the plane of masterhood. They have outgrown earthly bodies and take on flesh solely for the benefit of humanity. The world knows them as teachers, but all stem from the one supreme source of life whose name is Mystery of Mysteries. Now that you have rested, it is time to confront your past. From this knowledge, you will gain enlightenment and understanding concerning your present life on earth. Go and stand on the sign in which the sun was placed at your birth. Bare feet covering the shining patterns. You find your sign easily. The circular walls of this room are covered with bronze mirrors. The one which encompasses the degrees of your sign begins to glow as if your coming has brought it to life. The red gold metal pulsates, emitting a curious humming tone which fills the room. Now the throbbing ribbon has to be inside your head, accompanying your heartbeat. A chair is thrust beneath you and you drop into it, your eyes fixed upon the gleaming and glowing mirror. Suddenly the mirror darkens again and the vibrations are drawn back into its depths. In the same instant, you know instinctively that something has gone from you and has been absorbed into the speculum. As you watch, a grey mist creeps over the surface. It swirls and shifts, becoming ever more dense until the centre clears and the vapor rolls back as if pulled by a magical force. And now the speculum is filled with all manner of glowing pictures. What is shown to you may make you laugh or cry, feel angry, sorrowful or glad. The visions will evoke responses from your emotional body of feeling and at the same time inform your intellect. The experience is entirely personal.
you may recognize another soul with whom you have a karmic link, for whatever reason. If you have already met him or her again in this life, it will be your decision as to whether you deem it wise to inform them about the part they play in your karmic record. If you feel they will understand, well and good. You may even be shown your next life on earth, although this is not a common occurrence. You will be informed only to the point of your own endurance and or comprehension. If you see nothing, do not despair. This merely indicates that you are not quite ready for this kind of revelation. And you must try again in another 12 months time. At last, the scenes fade, and the mirror resumes its original appearance. Mart comes to you, offering another beaker of wine. Drink, then rest a while. The guide will lead you out. We shall meet again. She waits until you have drained the liquid, then leaves the room. When you walk over to the curtain, the guide appears and leads you along the passage and through the great hall. As you step outside, the slinky form of the jackal glides to your side and accompanies you until you reach the avenue of sphinxes then he, too, is gone. Once more you pass the great stone figures. The moon has set and the horizon lightened to a faint pinkish glow. The wine is taking its effect. So you sit at the base of a column, watching the sky. Quite suddenly, the god of the ancient Egyptians lifts over the horizon at the end of the avenue, huge and red. The white sphinxes leap into startled color, flaming orange red, their shadows slow moving and deepest blue black. As the scene fades, you hear, faintly, birds from their nest atop the columns, whistling and piping to the newborn day. In your chair before the altar, sit still and digest the journey the path of Libra. It is best to record your experiences as soon as possible while they are still fresh in your mind. Though a view of previous lives can usually be recalled at will. Certainly, they will be helpful when studying the natal chart of your present life.